there are some things that he says that I fully agree with, but then there's things that he takes. It's it's literally a zero to a hundred real fucking quick. Like, is any of this ad hum even necessary, or is he just fucking throwing? It literally sounds like he's just throwing a temper tantrum right now. Um, like the only way I agree with it is that you do have to kind of couch your language when talking to certain people, but that's in any event. It's not just in the workforce. If, okay, if I end up, up hitting a window. Up, hold up, hold up. It is completely different from breaking a ma- breaking glass, which is a materialistic thing, and bringing a hu- whole ass human into the world. Yeah. Okay, let's stop. Otherwise, I'm going to get off and not play with you tonight. If you can't have the conversation, that's fine. So yeah, as I was telling Waxy and Ace earlier, I decided to stream this stuff on Discord instead. That way then, uh, if people want to react or or want to react with me, they're able to hop in and we can actually do that shit instead of just, if someone were to hop into the Discord channel, fucking having to wait for that 5 to 10 second stream delay just to realize what the fuck is going on. Um, well, and also, like, for somebody to type something out, I bet it's long past the segment that's there. All right, so today's reaction video is uh, Hunter Avalon. Um, a lot of times when I watch his videos, he does a really poor job at, I don't know if it's interpreting them or just straight up comprehending. I don't know if he immediately is just always like, this person is, or the, I, I don't know if he always just goes straight to the, worst case scenario but that's what it seems like a lot of the time um don't get me wrong i have watched some really good debates where he's very charitable and whatnot but a lot of his reaction videos he he goes way too far into it and interprets things that i think only someone in bad faith would do um so i figured can't he used to be a conservative he grew up in a catholic household um, and then throughout the years has gotten progressively more left. Um, I don't know if he was always that way, but let's see. Let's see how he reacts to Candace Owens. Go lefty. <laughs> uh, so this video is called Women Are Distracting Landmines. Candace Owens Goes Mad. Thank you, baby. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. Covered Sneeko talking uh, very poorly about women. Let's listen to somebody else talk very poorly about women, you know? The the hatred of women doesn't stop here, okay? Candace Owens has... So right then and there, I mean, granted, I don't... I obviously haven't seen the whole Candace Owens video, so it's possible that Candace Owens is saying, talking some sort of shit about women, but immediately he pinpoints it to a red pill ideology, and not just a normal red pill I- ideology, but an, ex- an extreme red pill ideology of Sneeko. decided to drop in to let us all know why women in the workplace is actually not a good thing because they're distracting that's right apparently us cavemen neanderthal drooling men are unable to do our work because there's a pretty girl by the fucking copier i must sec so i i don't really agree with that obviously uh women are in the workplace it's a great thing that they are in the workplace um the economy and the u.s is better because they are in the workplace but uh i know when it comes to some um like male camaraderie uh men almost immediately uh will act differently if there's a female present um i mean i take it if you have uh, a bunch of guys together, they're going to do a bunch of stupid shit. But then the second you throw a female into there, they're trying to more to impress the female than it is to uh, actually do what they think has to be done. I just press the... Nope, I can't just press the fucking spacebar. Actually harass her. Ugh. Then, of course, I thought to myself, women in the workplace. Hmm about that one are we a distraction do you guys think we're a distraction doesn't matter if we think you're a distraction it actually that is actually completely irrelevant it's not about whether or not we find you to be distracting now so i i do agree with hunter here it doesn't matter if we find women distracting 
Um, I mean, you go from one generation where, uh, I mean, women were just lucky to have a man with a decent paying job to now where they can control the, their own finances and they can live ha- the lives that they actually want to instead of just being like, oh, he has a paycheck. I'm covered. I think that you're distracting, not because of your appearance or anything, but mainly because of how fucking stupid you are. And I can smell the stench of desperation through my computer screen. So, yes, that would be a little distracting, but whether or not men find women in the workplace distracting is aside the point. This is on men. So, is that ad hom really necessary? Um, I mean, I, I don't even know what the fuck she is wearing here, but just to say about the stench of desperation, like, these are clearly her own views. Like, what the fuck is she desperate for? I guarantee she's not desperate for you. Not being creepy perverts. This isn't on women to not be distracting, okay? Newsflash. Women are assaulted and treated poorly regardless of how they are dressing, That's how true. they are behaving. It doesn't matter, okay? It's sad. Yeah, that but is true. I will say that. Matter, that whether a woman is wearing a fucking bikini or completely covering herself up in a turtleneck, a pervert guy is going to be perverted towards her regardless. It doesn't matter. That's true. I mean, you have people who could be 100% fully dressed, not have anything covering them, but men will still try to sexualize them in some way, shape, or form. I mean, you have the uh, Muslim community where they could be fully covered in burqas, and if their ankle is showing, that's too much fucking skin. Like, like, rape has been around for how long? It's not just something that randomly started coming because women started wearing loss it's been around for years oh of course and what no matter what somebody wears is never an excuse in any way shape or form um trying to pinpoint or trying to pin a essay or a grape on a female based on what she wears is just that's just low that's um that's just a shitty fucking man if someone tries to do that it's justifying what the man did based on what the woman was wearing, not on the man's actions, even right. though he's the one that did it. Yep, you're completely right. And the more I thought about it, I thought, yeah, we kind of are a distraction. If you think about work in general, if you think about what men have to do when they go to work now, it's essentially just a bunch of landmines, right? Once upon a time, it was a man's world. Yes, I agree. And by what the, way- the fuck? A bunch of landmines? Okay, so you're unironically victim blaming right now. You're acting like it's the problem of women that they are being distracting and that it's now like a landmine everywhere because men are creepy. This is, I, I, I hate to sound like a bedroom feminist where they're like, Teach men not to rape. But seriously, why don't you ever have this conversation with men? Why is it like it's just a given that men are brainless Neanderthals, you know? But women, make sure you're not showing any ankles. Don't be flashing your elbow. I will agree. Men definitely need to learn how to control themselves. And just having a woman in the workplace is it's not a distraction. I'm going to piggyback on that. Um, so along with that, like, growing up, when, like, boys teased me and things like that or were bullied, they're like, oh, they just like you. Men will be men. Boys will be boys. That's just how they are. And it's the women that have to learn how to deal with them when that shouldn't be the case. <clears throat> so don't get me wrong. I fully believe that in some environments, um... Some environments uh, need to be like strict dress code and whatnot, such as school, um, because men are such sexual people. Uh, I mean, not that this is an excuse in any way, shape, or form. We should always be teaching men to control themselves and uh, make sure that they are becoming the best individuals that they can be. But I know in school, like, people would complain about if a girl's skirt was too short or something like that. I fully believe that. Uh, okay. 
Can I say something though? Yeah. I yeah. remember in first grade, and I can show you my school picture. I got dress coded for the dress that I was wearing because I had sp spaghetti straps. I was in first grade. Right. I never fucking understood that shit. Like, it's shoulders. Are people really sitting there just being like, oh my god, those those shoulders? Oh my god, I, I think I gotta go to the bathroom and go finish myself off real quick. Like, Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Too short of skirts and things like that, 100% understandable. Of course. If they are not wearing proper things underneath. Like, let's say they're wearing leggings. Um, or jeans. If right. that's just how... As the long, person wears it. As long as you are moderately covered up, like, you're not showing off your fucking breasts, you're not showing off your ass or something like that, I don't really see a big reason in being, like, like you said, the sp spaghetti straps. That's a dumb fucking dress code, especially if you're fucking covering your breasts and fucking making it so that way, then no one can actually see any, per like, sexual organs. There's no... There's no actual reason to fucking freak out about that. I mean, we're not we're not in a Muslim society where, I mean, we're like, holy shit, look at those ankles. Yeah, it's like, don't get me wrong, women can also be sexual predators as well. Oh, of course. But I still feel like in growing, like, at a young age, you should know when where consent and like how consent is and how that works. I wish I got taught that at a young age. That would have been freaking amazing. Um, but along with that, I think that school, like you said, should be one of the places that you need to dress respectfully due to the fact that they are growing minds. Oh, exactly. And it's really like, so the whole purpose of school is to civilize kids. Um, and putting a kid, whether it be a male or female, in that type of environment where you're, like, letting sexual things get out of hand, um, that's not good for anyone. It's not going to civilize anybody. It's just going to revert us back to our caveman brain. I completely agree with that. You can continue on with the... <laughs> <Will do. laughs> to... well, I just said nothing okay, else. You... It's all good. And if you guys start talk talking, like, the second you start talking, I can pause it right away. Don't feel like you have to wait for me to pause it. I think I can pause it as well. No, I no, can't. No, you can't. Only I can. Keep your weenus yeah. in your pants or in your sleeve, more like it. Don't be distracting. That's why sexual harassment occurs. God damn those women and their fucking being distracting by doing their job quietly, minding their own business. Ugh. Right? I mean, so, something that I fully believe Hunter Avalon has correct is that you're at a workplace to work. You're not. You're not supposed to be sitting there to, freaking Google at your employees all day or your coworkers all day. Like, no joke. When I go into work, I sit down at my computer, I and I do my job. I don't talk to anybody unless they come up and talk to me first. Granted, I know I am an outlier when it comes to that, but like you're there to do a job. You're not there to socialize or try to pick up a date or uh f just flirt with your coworkers. You're there to do a job. So, I will piggyback on that. Yep. You get you don't and have to wait for I me agree, to respond. I have some disagreements as well. Yeah, like, please go. I know. Um so with that, in my line of work, like I'm a receptionist. I need to communicate with some of the providers and things like that. But there are also other jobs where you need to have that teamwork and that communication to be able to do the task at hand or right. to be able to work with other things. Okay. So now with that, you can definitely form bonds and form connections, but I feel like they should be pursued outside of work in a more romantic or friendly gesture. Right. Like, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you can't be friendly with your coworkers. And obviously... Your job specifically, you have to communicate. Um, yeah. Granted, my job, I can literally do everything with an email, so I don't actually have to, like, face-to-face -face talk with anybody. But your job, you're a receptionist. Like, people come in, you have to talk to them. Fucking your uh, people who you respond to, I can't think of the word off the top of my head right now. Like, you Therapist have... Therapist, providers. Right, you have to talk to them. Um, 
so I'm not saying like you can't communicate with them. More or less what I'm being like is uh so like with my job specifically, if I don't have anything to talk to anybody about, like I'm not gonna talk to you. Um there's nothing granted I'm terrible with small talk, so that doesn't help at all. Um That's definitely true. <laughs> but like That's okay, I mean, wait what? So it's okay, I'm terrible too. Um and like you said, people build these relationships at work. I'm not saying like you can't talk to anybody at all. It's more or less just being like, know the time and the place. And I completely agree with you that. Oh. Were you going to say something else? No, nope, no. Nope. I will okay. actually be back, but you can continue the video. Sounds good. I want to make it clear. I am not making an argument that women should not have the right to work and should be relegated to the household. I'm not. That's how it sounded originally. I, <laughs> I love that too, by the way. Are women distracting? Yeah. We're basically a landmine everywhere. You know, it used to be for men to work, but I'm not saying that women shouldn't be in the workforce or anything. All of these people are spineless cowards. Jane, that things have gotten worse at work since women joined. Since women joined the workforce, uh, I think that men are having to deal with all these landmines everywhere. Do I say something? Do I not? I genuinely cannot understand how somebody who is not mentally deficient with an IQ below room temperature could ever think that this is even a good argument or even coherent. You actually have to be fucking deranged. Now men need to deal with all this? What about women who are trying to provide for their families and who out now need to deal with men being creepy and harassing them? Is that... Has that ever occurred to you, Candace? Or is it just on the women to, to not be distracting? I genuinely, I can't fathom being this brain dead. I say something, I have to be careful on how I speak to this person because she's a woman. She might see this as some sort of an assault. Oh, do I tell her she looks nice today or is she... So I do kind of agree with this, with Candace Owens here. Um, like, the only way I agree with it is that you do have to kind of couch your language when talking to certain people. But that's in any event. It's not just in the workforce. Like if I am out at a bar or something and I say something nice to a woman, just genuinely being nice, not flirty or anything like that, um, I have to worry about how she's going to perceive that, whether she thinks that I'm just being nice or whether or not she thinks that I'm flirting or whether or not she thinks that I'm being a fucking creep. Um, but that's in any situation. It's not just in the workforce. So basically all Candace is talking about here is uh, basically just something that's an overall society. Like even when you talk to somebody of color, like, I mean, imagine like you have to kind of coach your language there too. Like I can't go up to someone and be like, yeah, these people over here, if it's like a group of black people or something, because people are going to look at that and be like, what do you mean these people? gonna think that that's inappropriate is it appropriate especially in the post me too how is this the problem of women this is this is a problem for men to deal with candace you're literally saying because men are afraid of women that what she's gonna accuse him of sexual assault because he said hi how are you doing today what are you talking about right now who gave you a fucking microphone Some see i don't this is part of the this is one of the issues with the hunter avalon like he she candace owens clearly said what she meant like in situations being like you look nice today and then he flips it and is like men have to be careful about if they say hi how are you doing today it's like she literally gave word for word what she was meaning and then he goes to the worst case scenario as like the most medial thing ever men have to worry about that you're so brain dead Somebody get this dumb cunt off the air. To era, forget it. Do I say anything to her? Well, if I don't say anything to her, well, she's going to say that I'm ignoring her because I'm a man. If I say something to her, she's going to say I'm only speaking to her because I'm a man. I mean, yep, I... Yep, I love it. I love the, the straw man. Yep, that's how it is. Ever since that movement that pointed out literal systemic issues with how women were treated in Hollywood, now Steve just wants to ask Brenda to please move over because he needs to get to the copier and he's too afraid. What if he says, hey, Brenda, can you please move? And she interprets that as meaning, hey, Brenda, can you please move on my dick right now? And then she accused him of sexual harassment, and then he gets fired from his job, and then he goes homeless, and his whole family starves to death. You know, goddamn.
again, just the worst possible interpretation. Right, ever. where the hell did all that come from? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. This is what I was talking about at the beginning. Like, I, there are some things that he says that I fully agree with, but then there's things that he takes. It's it's literally a zero to a hundred real fucking quick, and he's the one right. who brings it there. Damn women, you know? It's just so funny. Teach men how to talk to women. Don't be creepy when you're talking to women. Treat them like human beings, and you should be okay. So the whole don't be creepy to women, literally that goes off of the female's perspective. Like, you could have two people say the exact same thing to a woman, and depending on how she views you is depending on if it's creepy or not. Okay, there's an HR yeah. department in most major companies yeah. for a reason. I guess that's somewhat true, yeah. Right, and don't get me wrong, like, most of the time, if you're saying something super benign, like, hi, how are you, mm. most people... Again, right, yeah, again, go. Men aren't really taught how to coach their language. Oh, that's true. So, when it comes off creepy, the man doesn't know how to not come off creepy, but... Oh, of course. Like, because you know, not a lot of men are taught body language. And... Well, so how, so how I kind of see it is, women have been working on their language skills for years. Literally, the only thing a guy had to do before, like, basically twenty, thirty years ago, was as long as they were making a paycheck, they were almost guaranteed to get a woman. Now that women are starting to be in the workforce, they're starting to be able to fend for themselves, men have to be able to adapt to this and be like, okay, so she doesn't need a paycheck. What else can I provide? And that's, that's definitely true. Yeah, that's... It, personally, I think that's, like, one fault in today's men is they still have, like... They still feel like in order to get a girl, you have to be the most manliest man out there when that's not the right, case. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I, I mean, if women are able to get a paycheck nowadays, like, why aren't men adapting and being like, okay, so you don't need a provider. You need someone who's able to listen to you, who is able to communicate with you, who's able to... The whole... The whole male competitive scene is completely different than what it was a oh, decade definitely, ago. Definitely. Um, my two cents on this is the fact of we don't want a provider, we want a partner. Somebody exactly. to build a life with. Right. I don't know if you heard earlier, but I was literally saying how like thirty years yeah. ago okay, yeah. Fucking men just they have to do better in this regard. And And not only that, it's like Women also, like, nowadays, it is becoming a lot more needed that men actually have to act like gentlemen. Like, oh, of course. Yeah. I know you guys are, but, like... So, I, I fully it? believe it all depends on, on the woman. So, like, there are some women out there who, they don't really want a gentleman, they want a bad boy. Um, but I feel like that's getting less and less as the years go on and as, as we're adapting as a society. I feel like in the end, we want somebody to generally care about us and not just want something out of us. Right. Like to actually generally listen and to our feelings and want to actually fix the relationship mm -hmm. and not just how generation has been men don't have emotions they are just these strong rocks they they don't cry like that's not what we want we want to see the emotions yeah so i think that has to do with how we are raised so i mean if you think oh, about yeah. it men are, are more aggressive like that's just a proven fact um i mean if you think about it like a little girl she's more likely to cry when she doesn't get what she wants, whereas a little boy is more likely to throw a temper tantrum and start throwing things, hitting things, stuff like that. And instead of uh, teaching these little boys like how to react to situations appropriately and being like, hey, 
You don't throw things. You talk to me about your issues. We just say, no, don't hit instead of like teaching them. Whereas girls, because they're, uh, they're more emotional in a, like a sad sense, because anger is an emotion. I can't say they're just emotional. Um, I mean, there's, there's not really anything you can do to kind of correct that be- behavior except for be like, suck it up, but then you're not being, uh, you're not caring about their feelings. If that makes that, sense. But... Oh, if they'll press Reason, play. Okay, if some woman's going to falsely accuse you of harassment because you said hi, odds are HR is going to work that out for you. I couldn't even imagine the internal dialogue that men must be having at work at all times. And I laugh because this year, the, the Daily Wire... How is she doing... Like, literally, how is this... St- think of the men. What about the women after the Me Too movement? What about the women who have experienced systemic sexual harassment and degradation throughout their careers? What do you think the internal dialogue going through the woman's mind is? So, can I say something invi- on that? Yep. Uh, with Please the do. Whole, um... So back when I was living in Lakeville and I was a manager out at Culver's, Mm -hmm. I had recently got promoted to management and there was this guy that got upset that I was promoted and he did not. Um, And so what my boss said, um, and uh, so I brought up the issue, everything like that. My boss said, if you guys can't get along, I'm taking away your promotion. Now, he also got one as well, but it wasn't up to management. Right. So we were we're both going to lose our promotion for something that he said, and I was bringing it to the general manager's attention. And so now fast forward yep. a few weeks. Um, I am cleaning out the custard machine and with what I was wearing, um, I did not have a front pocket to put my card at. Yep. So I had it in my back pocket, and it was sticking out a little bit. And this same dude came up and was like, hey, you have your card in your back pocket. And I said, yeah, I know. Why are you looking there? He's like, oh, because I'm a guy and I can. Mm. I bring that up to management, to the same dude again. And he's like, you guys need to figure out a way to get along. Yeah, that um, that is just fucking... Honestly, that's just shitty fucking management there. Fucking so don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm I I have what I call shiny squirrel syndrome. So like if I see something out of my peripheral move, my brain immediately is like, what's that? And there are times where like I might be looking at something, something catches my eye, whether like whatever it may be, and my brain immediately goes and I may notice something. So I mean him just straight up seeing your card in your back pocket that's not the big deal i think the big deal there is that he just decided to blame it oh i'm a man that's yes that's called the shitty man behavior and so my thing of it is is he had to be watching for a little bit um because of how i was standing on the custard machine you could not see it until i uh stood back up uh, I, so he was staring for a little bit. It's not just like, oh, something caught my attention. Well, so it could have been, and I don't know the situation. So I'm just going, I'm trying to be as good faith as I can to him on the can, situation. Can um, I also say this about the dude and why I know he was looking? Yeah. Um, He went around and he told everybody that I sent him sexual photos. I never did. He had a flip phone. He would have had proof. Yeah, you should have called corporate at that point. But it's not a corporate store. It's a franchise. You should have contacted somebody higher up than your manager because if their only response is... So, was your manager a male or female? Not that it really matters. He was a male. He was a male. So, it could have been... And again, this is just me trying to be as like good-intentioned as possible because I don't, I don't know the situation. I don't know these people. Um, I'm just, I know how some things could look compared to, uh, what the actual intentions are. Um, and it could have been that he was just like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this. You guys need to fucking figure this shit out yourself. But 
the second that he said specifically the sexual intention being like i'm a man that's when the man just should have stepped in stepped in and been like that's so inappropriate dude not even a write-up yeah again that was just that was poor management on your managers yeah i just wanted to throw it in there because like I just, I feel like sometimes with management, they just don't want to deal with the issues, so they just kind of brush it off. Right, and don't get me wrong, I can't, I can't, right, and I can't say I haven't pushed issues under the rug, but it was never an issue about, like, any type of sexual thing in the workplace. Oh, wow, somebody's stealing a few fries while they're working? I don't care, are they being safe about it? Are they washing their hands? So it all depended on who's looking. So, like, if there's my district manager, at, if there was the district yeah, manager yeah. at my store, it was, yep, you're getting written up and you're getting sent home immediately for taking one fry. Um, but 99% of the time it was, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Just don't Apparently let... Same. Don't go against food safety. Don't fucking let a customer see. Like, as long as you were doing those two things, I really didn't give a fuck. If you can be smart about it, I don't care. If you can be safe about it, I don't care. But the mm-hmm. moment that those two things are not into effect, then yes, I do care. Yeah, and if that incident ever happens, it, like, and your manager is like, you guys need to figure it out, you need to go above your manager. Oh, yeah, but you also have to remember, that was my first job. I was 17 years old. I think I was leaving a few weeks later. Okay. Um, so, like, at that point, I really did not give a fuck. But um, I know that everybody else hated him, and he got bullied out of, out of a job, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's also not okay. Do not bully people out of a job. All right, okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> but when he is literally micromanaging every single person, even the other managers... Then yes. All right. Yeah. That, they're just sticking up for themselves. But yes, you. Need okay. The so yeah, that's not bullying. That's sticking up for yourself. I understand what you're talking about. I'm gonna press play. Environment where it's now been demonstrated to having much higher likelihood of there being sexual harassment or assault involved. What? How do you look at this situation and say, "Think of the men. Think of the poor men." Oh. I found out that the Christmas party was dry, and immediately in my head, I didn't say this out loud, but I'm saying it out loud now. I thought to myself. Why is it a dry party? What? Who ruined it? Right? <laughs> who ruined it? Why is there a dry Christmas party? Everybody knows Christmas parties are not supposed to be dry. Supposed to get have a um, great time. Again, this is just Candace. Candace Owens not being. Th- this is just a stupid take by Candace Owens. Fucking who cares if the Christmas party has alcohol in it or not? Um, I mean, I'll put it this way: if you had just guys getting drunk as fuck. I did some stupid fucking shit with my guy friends when it was just us getting around getting drunk. Grant, and then you add females into that, obviously it has a situation to go even worse. Time with all of your colleagues, everyone gets ridiculously drunk, and it's the one time a year that you can do that. All of your work all year, and you look forward to the holiday season so that you and all of the office employees and office colleagues can get drunk. But no, now, similar to Daily Wire, a bunch of corporations are saying, mm-mm, let's not do that, mm-mm, let's not do that. Well, why are they saying let's not do that? I don't know for sure, but probably because they're avoiding traps, right? How do you blame women for this? If you can't get drunk at a Christmas party because it's too risky that one of the men might become creepy and start harassing and or assaulting a woman there that is the fault of the man candace it's not the fault of the woman okay it's the fault of the man this is literally like saying why can't we drive drunk anymore guys god damn it this used to be a free society now all of a sudden we're living in communist russia can't even drive drunk all because those stupid pedestrians are walking across the streets maybe if the pedestrians weren't there we could drive drunk like no, boo. If you're driving your car drunk and you smash into somebody, that's your fault. It's not the fault of the person crossing the street. If you're at a Christmas party and you're getting tipsy and some guy starts being creepy, that is the fault of the guy. This isn't the fault of, well, a woman's there and she looked kind of hot. Did anybody think about this? How are you simultaneously talking about, like, 
traditional values and everything else, but then you simultaneously seem to believe that men are just these unhinged cavemen. You're unironically making the what was she wearing argument right now. If you can't stop yourself from being... Yeah, I completely... So I have two things to say. One, when he said boo, that was cringe as fuck and he deserves... To, he, like, he should have cut that part out. That's so fucking cringe to call someone boo. Um, but he does have a point... Okay, boo. <laughs> he does have a point here. Like, Candace Owens is literally giving a shitty fucking argument. It's literally being like, well, if women weren't there, we wouldn't have to worry about sexual assault. It's like, well, why does there have to be alcohol when you're with your coworkers? Like, no matter what the event is. Like, I don't know if I would really want my coworkers to see me getting shit-faced in public like, at a party or some shit like that. Honestly, I agree with that because, one, I'm the youngest and I'm pretty sure my company. Um, at least as of right now. So right. I feel like that would just be like, oh, wow, look at how irresponsible she is. Da-da-da-da-da. Right, nobody acts their best when they're drunk. So why would you even want alcohol in a workplace for the potential to say or do something stupid? Um, and then have to live with that while you're still at your job. Literally go to work with these people 40 hours a week. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I don't, I mean, granted, this is the office and whatnot, like, and whatnot, but people are getting drunk and freaking, uh, fuck. Now I'm trying to, I'm not remembering correctly, but like, if I'm acting stupid in front of my coworkers, I don't want anyone to fucking remember that. I'd probably be like, okay, I'm leaving now. I'm quitting. Like, I'm not working here anymore. I'm fucking, I embarrass the fuck out of myself too much. At Whether women are there or not it makes no fucking difference. Being a rapey fuck. When you get drunk, then don't get drunk. That's on the man, Candace, to not be creepy. And by the way, what's next? What if a guy there is gay? So now it's all men, okay? It's the, it's the man's world. What if one guy gets drunk and he's gay and he makes a move on one of his colleagues? Should we just separate people if they find them attractive at all? Should it be like, listen, Steve, this is going to be your new secretary, okay? This is Brenda. Take a look. Do you think she's hot? Rate her on a scale of 1 to 10. Anytime somebody gets a rating over the, the rating of 5, we're going into hot territory, so they just get transferred into a different office. Is that it now? No, you're, you're no longer able to work with anybody who might... Again, with the bad interpretations or bad analogy or something, like, what the fuck was the point in that? Like, what, first off, do you, does he believe that someone has to find someone attractive in order to sleep with them? I mean, I can't, I, I'm not gonna lie, I've had a one night stand that I fucking regret wholeheartedly just because I was trying to get fucking laid. Agree with you there. Agree with you there. Like, and again, it's not like alcohol makes you have good decisions. What do they say? I think it's like, she's a five when you're sober, but a ten when you're drunk. Like, Yeah. Might be even remotely attractive to you. The, the point is that people should be able to control their behavior. And men have a responsibility to not be creepy fucks around women, whether they're drunk or not. Lastly, Candace, I don't know why you're complaining about not getting drunk. You're clearly drunk right now because only a drunk fucking turd could ever make an argument this abysmally stupid in 2023 in current year. This is so embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you. Secondhand embarrassment is hitting me right now, everywhere. I sincerely hate Candace Owens. She is a horrible subhuman piece of garbage. And the fact that she has a voice and an audience. Like, is any of this ad hum even necessary? Or is he just fucking throwing, it literally sounds like he's just throwing a temper tantrum right now because he 100%. dislikes what she's saying. Like, you can dislike someone, communicate that clearly, Without being like this fucking bitch right here, like. The no, don't get me wrong. There are some people that definitely should not be with a platform, but you can't control that. Right, like, that. I I completely agree. Some people shouldn't have. Actually, I don't agree with that. Everyone should have a platform. It, we should have the, um, what is it? The uh, 
fucked something of ideas basically where everyone's able to say what they want but then the bad ideas slowly get weeded out over time so things such as slavery fucking at one point everyone was able to talk about it we realized that enslaving humans was a terrible thing to do and we have pushed that ideology out the window but now if someone were to be on social media having their own platform saying i think we should have slavery in this form i'm not gonna say like they shouldn't be able to say this stuff i'm just gonna be like wow that was a really dumb thing for them to say like and these are the reasons why i think that it was dumb i'm not just gonna sit there and be like you're stupid let fuck me, off no let me let me prophesize this a little bit better mm -hmm. i don't think some people should have platforms because they influence the young generation and they have those bad viewpoints. Are you talking about Andrew Tate? Not just him. There are definitely <laughs> a ton of other people. Like, don't get me wrong. There are some things that Andrew Tate definitely um, should not move on with the further generation, but you can't control that. But. I do think that, and this is more on parents than on people, but some kids with developing minds should not be on the internet as much as they are, or should not be watching these influencers without some parent control. So then they have somebody to talk to about it. So then they have somebody to discuss what they're listening and not just have this one idea of how it is. Right. But like you said originally, I think that's more of an issue with the parents not controlling what their yeah. kids are viewing more than it is the kids who are viewing the stuff. Um, how I see it is as long as you're not uh, doing a call to action, so such as um, they aren't screaming fire in a crowded theater if there is no fire, uh, I, I don't really see a big issue with them having a platform because the um worldview of ideas will kick those bad views out i mean if you think about it we have flat earthers but how serious is the flat earth movement like we've been able to like tell these people and convince enough people like hey these ideas are dumb they're dumb for this reason um, what about anti-vaxxers are you talking of I can't talk about that on Twitch. No. Okay. <laughs> That's just one of Let those things. Let me just say this. <laughs> they want all their other kids to be protected, but they don't want their kid to be protected. They want to live in a society that everybody else has this vaccine, but not their kids. So how I see it is it depends on if you're talking about the old, defi like the old definition of anti-vax or the new definition of anti-vax. So, like I guess I didn't know there was two. Um, so, like, the old anti-vax was, I don't want to be vaccinated, I'm against vaccinations. Um, the new anti-vax is if you are against vaccine mandates, you're considered anti-vax. And I, so I agree with the first definition, where, like, if you are against vaccines, you're an anti-vaxxer. But if you don't yeah. think the government should be forcing people to get vaccinated, I don't think that's an anti-vaxxer. That's just someone who doesn't think the government should have that type of control. Uh, I, I know this is something that you probably cannot talk about, but um, what about reproductive rights? Like, oh, they I can talk about that. Are, okay. so, they are forcing women to have this thing in their body so can literally be killing them because it's dead so i i believe that the so like medical necessities i fully believe that believe in that exception but most states don't even treat medical necessities as abortion they treat them as a medical necessity um don't get me wrong there are some states and doctors who take it way too far such as i believe in texas there was this case where um like the doctors, had... the, the doctors told her, like, this baby's not going to survive. You're going to end up giving birth to a dead baby. 
um, but because it still has a heartbeat, we can't take it out. I fully believe that's fucked up. Like, nobody should have to go through that. But how I see it is if you consciously chose to ha engage in sex, sex can have consequences. So, therefore, you chose, whether directly or indirectly, to have a child. You chose to create that life. Um, and when you have, when you make that choice, so, you... Let me just throw this out there real quick before you continue on. I yep. get that. But I believe this is also in Texas. This woman's baby died in embryo. And she could not get it taken out. Yep, and so that's she, what I was talking about. Yeah. So, like, it... And she had to... um like, it was dead inside the womb. It did not have a heartbeat. It was fully dead. It was starting to decay inside of her body and was growing necrotic tissue. And the doctors were would still not take it out. So part of me blames the doctors in that situation. The reason being is because they had, I, I, I believe it was months to, that they knew that Texas was going to have these certain restrictions. The hospital lawyers should have looked more into it and been like okay in these situations we can do this in these situations we can do this but instead they decided to be like we're wiping our hands clean it's not our fault blame the government um because along with that though is that in some cases the government would go after the doctor who performed the surgery or the yep uh, so uh, they had basically had a, I don't remember if they actually made this into a bill, but they had talked about it, where they're not going to go after the person who's getting the abortion, they're going to go after the person performing the abortion. The reason being is because um, it's a lot easier to, I mean, if, if you're going to go after somebody for doing something, you're going to go after the person who ultimately made the decision to do it, not the person who wants the thing done. So, like, if I want somebody killed and I tell somebody, like, hey, man, I really wish this person was killed, but I didn't, like, say you go kill them or something, I'm not going to get in trouble for being like, yeah, I wanted this person dead. The person who killed the person, that, that whoever, is going to be the one who gets the homicide charge. If I am correct, though, because of HIPAA laws, they would not be able to figure out who got those surgeries done, but they could figure out who did the surgeries. Yep, ex exactly. And so I, I think that's why they did it that way. I don't think you should blame the woman for wanting to get the thing done. I think you should blame the doctors for doing the thing. It's kind of like if there is a schizophrenic person who believes that they should be an amputee, you're not going to blame the person for wanting to be an amputee. You're going to blame the doctor for making them an amputee. I feel like that is a completely different scenario, though. There's literally nothing that you can... There's a direct one-to-one -one comparison. I know. I know <laughs> there's not. But, like, in that case, you can't regrow a limb, but you can re... Well, not every time there can be complications, but you can regrow a baby. It's like, if something happened with... I don't know if she likes to be called her name, but your girlfriend, when she delivers her baby, are you going to save the baby, or are you going to save her life? I'm going to save her life, easily. Like, there's no... Exactly. Granted, she doesn't want me to. We've already talked about this, and she said that she would much oh. rather I save the baby. And I'm like, nope, not going to happen. No. I can have enough. Don't get me wrong. Uh, if something were to happen with Dakota whenever he is born, like, yes, I can have another baby, but I will never have another Dakota. And that's completely true. But you can never have another partner the way that you do have oh, exactly. yours now. Um, so. Uh, Basically, my big thing is if it's a medical necessity, so such as if it comes down to either the fetus's life or the born person's life, you're going to choose the born person, but that's because you're not going to trade one life for another. You're going to get rid of... The, 
So how I see it is in those instances, it's a matter of self-defense. You are literally defending your body from something that can kill you or like is, is about to kill you. Um, my big issue with abortion nowadays is you have people who are just like, I don't want this kid, so that's why I'm getting rid of it. It has nothing to do with a medical necessity in any way, shape, or form, yet they try to push it off as, as, as if it's health care. When, in my opinion, health care is it, it's a necessity. If I get a cold, it's a necessity that I get better. If I break a leg, it is a necessity that I get better. If, if a woman gets pregnant, it is not a necessity that she kills off that fetus. I think I've already brought up this point to you, but what if you do all the things right and you still get pregnant? You are living in, you already have two kids, you're living paycheck to paycheck, barely scraping pennies by using every assisted program out there, and you still get pregnant. Uh, so honestly, how I see it is, a plus B equals C. You engaged in A plus B, and the consequence of that was C. Um, even if you use condoms, birth control, plan B, everything, even pulled out before. If, if I have some input. If I... Oh, wait, I'm sorry, what was that, Ace? Mind if I have some input? Yeah, go go ahead. First off, the, I don't think the government should have any say in this whatsoever which is what getting roe v wade did was pushed it back to the state instead of making it government mandated that the government was like you can do this guaranteed right and also like until that child has a herpes no more living than a cancer cell uh that's not true either um so first off a heartbeat is detected is at parasite. six weeks it if you want to classify that, you can, but it's not a parasite, mainly because parasites are of a different species than the host. Um, but so a heartbeat is detected at six weeks. Uh, not to mention, if you go and do a an abortion procedure, which is called a um, fuck, was it? It's something and curatage or curatage and something, which is basically where they go in. Granted, nowadays it's different. They have pills and whatnot, which makes it easier. But what they would do is they would go into the uterus and basically cut up the fetus and then pull out the uh, parts. Um, what has been proven is that these fetuses will actively move away to try and preserve its own life. So therefore, that I mean, I'm not saying that's consciousness, but that's a desire to live. Um, And, and what is a difference than a parasite doing the same thing? So there's a few things. Moving away to live. So the so a leech is a parasite that's not going to it's it's gonna bite you once and it's gonna stay there. A tick is a parasite, it's gonna bite you once and it's gonna stay there. It's you can easily pull off a leech, pull off a tick, it's not going to like a, as you're pulling it off, it's not gonna uh it's not going to actively move away. It's just going to try and stay latched on, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so with your whole uh, argument about um, you can take every single precaution, if I'm out with my friends playing baseball or something in the street, I put a mattress on a car to make sure we, didn't, we don't break that window. I put blankets up to protect windows and shit like that. It doesn't matter if I if, okay, if I end up, up hitting a window. Up, hold up, hold up. It is completely different from breaking a breaking glass, which is a materialistic thing, and bringing a hu whole ass human into the world yep. where you have to raise for it and care for it for eighteen years. You if do you not do have every to. single thing. It, it, whatever if you do every <laughs> single thing to prevent it that is actively saying that just because you're a woman you should not engage in sex because you have a chance of getting pregnant if you don't so, want to get pregnant don't do that don't have sex so that is what it's coming across so to me. one that that is in sense the case if you do not want to get pregnant 
do not have sex. But it's the same thing for a man. I fully believe, like, I do not believe that men should be able to run away from these types of responsibilities, especially not at the numbers that they are. Like, we have um, men who literally will get a female pregnant and then never talk to that female ever again. And the women just allow this stuff to happen. Don't get me wrong. We have stuff like child support where even if the man does relinquish his rights, he's still forced to pay child support. But it's not often oh, where... Oh, just wants to play. Let's I, just play. Hold on. I got to finish this. It's not often where a woman will keep these men accountable and fight for the child support when a man does decide to run away. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I just had to finish that. Yeah, like, I'm we'll not, not go in with it more. <laughs> Um, don't get me wrong, if you guys ever want to have this debate, fucking let me know. I I have debated a lot of people. Um, I enjoy these types of debates, and I, 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 I enjoy them. I think they are interesting. I think they are fun. Um, it, it, it helps me get better rhetoric, as well as hopefully uh, makes other people more knowledgeable. I think one issue that the Democrats have nowadays is the fact that they run away from these arguments so much to the point where eventually uh, it's going to come at a point in time where the Republicans are like, this argument, this argument, this argument, and no one's going to be able to have a rebuttal for this type of stuff. So like, so like white nationalists are going to, if nobody engages with these people and talks to them about um like why their ideas are bad they just shut them out and shun them all it's doing is growing more people to be like well if you won't even talk to them they must be doing something kind of right i'm loading up valorant right now so e even though these conversations are difficult i fully believe that they are a necessity Yeah, Glow, you can jump into general too right now. And again, if you guys disagree with me, uh, it's it's okay for you guys to disagree with me. Um, I, I have I no... I 100% disagree with you, but that's <laughs> only because I am a woman. Um, yep. And, uh, I mean, that's not a really good excuse because there's plenty of Plenty of pro-life women out there who What's up, guys? fully agree with me. How's it going, dude? Okay, but like what you're saying is that even though I can use a condom and I can even take plan B, that if I get pregnant, I have to go through with the pregnancy. Even if I did A, B, C, and D all correct. So actions have consequences. You can play life safe. You can do everything correct. You can do everything by the book and things can still go poorly. How you react to those things is one thing. I just don't believe that ending a human life is the correct course of action because of your own decisions that you consented to. I disagree on the fact that it's a human Okay, life. let's stop. Otherwise, I'm going to get off and not play with you tonight. You don't be like that. That is how upset you are getting me right now. That I just don't want to play video games. So that's why I'm saying let's stop. Otherwise, I'm going to get off. Okay, but... Okay. It's not because of we are talking. It's the fact that you are getting me, like, upset. To the Look point where I can't focus on a game. <laughs> if you can't have the conversation, that's fine. 